Hello students, welcome to lecture series of automobile engines. In today's session, we are going to learn about biodiming diagram. Before moving to actual biodiming diagram, let me show you one simple video. Here you can see this funny guy is coming inside the room. Fine. Now see this very clearly and with time. So in this video you can see now that a man is coming inside a room. For that he has to open the door. He will come inside the room and thereafter he will close the door. So if he is given at least 5 seconds to come inside the door, inside the house or inside the home or inside the room. Fine. If he is given 5 seconds. So he will use 2 seconds for opening the door, for 1 second for coming inside and that more 2 seconds for closing the door. So opening and closing of the door is also taking some time because he has to reach in that moment. Fine. So the same logic we will use in the biodynamic diagram. In a theoretical diagram you have seen that at exit TDC or at exit BDC walls are opening and closing. Fine. But in actual condition, it will not be like that. For opening and the closing of the valve, we have to provide some extra timing so that in that time, valves are fully opened and thereafter it works start. Fine. So for that, we will draw that actual valve timing diagram, which will be slightly different from this theoretical. The logic in actual and theoretical both are same. We will take theoretical as a basic diagram to draw this actual diagram. Fine. But we will introduce some of the degrees before and after BDC and TDC to exactly open and close the wall properly. So for that, now let me show you that wall timing diagram which is in actual condition. First, we will see about the petrol engine and thereafter we will see about diesel engine. So let's start. Before moving to exactly the actual vitamin diagram, before drawing that, let me show you some simple animation in which you can understand that valves are actually opening not exactly at TDC or BDC. So this is your first stroke in which piston is moving from top to bottom and inlet valve is open. Fine. I will show you this stroke at the end after the exhaust. Fine. Now see that second stroke. In this moment, piston is moving from BDC to TDC, it is compression stroke. Now see clearly that when piston is moving upwards, when it is leaving the BDC, the inlet valve is actually still open. When it moves slightly upwards, now it will start closing and when it leaves BDC, when piston leaves from BDC, thereafter it will close. Fine. So simply you can see that inlet valve will not start closing or it will not be exactly closed at BDC. It will actually start closing from BDC and when it reaches to some uh, space or you can say some degree of crankshaft, it will then after close. So when piston is moving, suppose it is BDC and it is our piston, when the piston is moving upwards, when it is leaving the BDC, the inlet valve starts closing and when it leaves for some more moment, thereafter inlet valve will be closed. Now let me show you this third stroke that is power stroke. In this stroke, you can clearly see that piston is moving from TDC to BDC. Now suppose, assume that it is my BDC and it is my piston. So piston is moving TDC to BDC. When it is about to reach BDC, the exhaust valve will start opening. Fine. Because we have to remove all the burnt gases which are already formed after the spark. We, these gases are formed. So we have to remove all that gases. So when piston is about to reach BDC, the exhaust valve will start opening. And when piston reaches exactly at BDC, it is actually open. Fine. So when in power stroke, it is not still exhaust stroke. In power stroke, the exhaust valve will start opening and when the piston reaches at BDC, almost the valve is already opened. So now, in fourth stroke, when it is exhaust, piston will move from BDC to TDC again and the valve is already open 
so all the gases will be removed easily from that open valve and in that case our exhaust will be done now let's back let's come back to our first that is suction stroke now when the exhaust is done when piston is reaches at a tdc you can see that at tdc both the valves are open inlet valve is also open exhaust is also open fine so this is called valve overlapping i will show you that in my coming diagram fine why we are giving this because we have two volumes inside the cylinder the major volume is called swept volume where the piston is moving fine and above that piston where piston cannot reach it is called clearance volume now when burnt gases are formed some of the gases are also trapped inside that clearance volume and we have to remove all that gases somehow by the from the engine so if we kept open both the valves exhaust valve is also open inlet is also open so from inlet the fresh charge will enter fine in fresh charge we will have fuel or fuel air mixture fine which is heavier than the exhaust gas so if we keep both the valves open that exhaust valve that exhaust gases will be removed out of the exhaust valve by this fresh charge this phenomena is called scavenging fine so for the scavenging purpose we are keeping both the valve open when the piston is at tdc and thereafter that all the gases which are trapped in the cylindrical volume that is in the clearance volume they will be removed and the fresh air will again enter the engine so you can uh, see clearly from this animation that we required some more time to open and close also and we also providing the scavenging effect we are also providing while overlapping to move the extra gases which are trapped inside the clearance volume so from this all phenomena now we will start drawing the actual valve timing diagram let's start let's see the actual valve timing diagram it is tdc it is bdc we are seeing this for petrol engine so we will draw these two lines first line that is horizontal line that is preference line and second is vertical line it is tdc and bdc now i have given here four tags the two are after and two are before so i will explain later why i have written this let's start from the first stroke that is suction stroke we already decided and we already know that for suction stroke we have to open the inlet valve when piston reaches at tdc so we will open it before tdc let's say 10 degrees fine so we will open before 10 degree at tdc and thereafter inlet will open fine so for the 10 degree when the piston is at tdc before that tdc we will open it for the 10 degree so let's start that inlet valve is open 10 degree before tdc fine you can see it in the figure so it is opening before 10 degree thereafter it will remain open throughout the suction process fine so in suction it is remain open fine when the piston reaches bdc it should also remain open because we are still suctioning all the fuel inside the engine now piston is at bdc all the suction is completed now the inlet valve will start closing so for again 10 degrees we are providing for that closing so it will be closed fully after bdc at exactly 10 degree so we will put that iv c that is inlet valve closed so in first stroke you have already seen that inlet valve will open 10 degrees before tdc and it will close 10 degrees after bdc now in the second case we will give some spark during the compression process fine because it is actual timing diagram so compression will start when compression piston is moving from bdc to tdc when we are also giving the spark now spark has tendency to ignite the fuel but fuel will not suddenly ignite so in that case we have to give ignition timing also and it is called ignition delay now ignition delay it has actually two delays first is physical delay second is chemical delay fine so for that delay we will start sparking before tdc so when piston will moving from bdc to tdc when it exactly reaches tdc the spark will do its work fine 
So when the piston is moving in compression stroke from BDC to TDC, when the piston reaches at a TDC, before some time, before TDC, you will provide spark. So exactly we will start the sparking before TDC, fine. So we will take 15 degree. So 15 degree before TDC, when the piston is moving at a TDC, we will start sparking. So for that 15 degree of the crank, spark will start, physical delay will be done, chemical delay will be done and when the piston reaches TDC, we will get that combustion blast which is used for the power stroke. So if we does not give that, if we do not give that a 15 degree, then piston will not take power stroke exactly from the TDC, fine. So we have to provide the perfect blast at TDC so that we will provide that 15 degree before TDC. That is a simple logic, fine. So spark will be given 15 degree before TDC and thereafter it will move. So when piston reaches TDC, it will get some blast, fine. So due to that blast, the piston will again move from TDC to BDC, fine. Now simply think that piston is moving downwards because of that blast. Now blast is drawing the piston downwards. So when all the fuels which is on the upper portion, it will it is burnt, which is in the down motion, which is in the downwards, it is not still burnt, fine. So it is burning layer by layer. So when piston is moving from TDC to BDC, it is actually burning it layer by layer and it is pushing the piston downwards, fine. So we will open that exhaust valve when piston is not exactly reaches BDC but before BDC, fine. So let's say we will take 25 degree for that time period in, in which time the, the exhaust valve will open and some of the gases which are already formed before the piston reach BDC they can be drawn outside, fine. So when piston is at exactly BDC, the exhaust valve will be fully opened and some of the exhaust gas which are already from before, they will be drawn out. So now piston is moving from TDC to BDC in the power stroke and when piston is about to reach BDC, before 25 degree, we are opening the exhaust. So it is called exhaust valve open at 25 degree before the BDC. Now exhaust valve is open. We will do exhaust stroke. In that case, piston will move from BDC to TDC because of the weight of the crankshaft, fine. So piston will move from BDC to TDC. Again, we will keep it open until the piston reaches TDC because if we close it, exhaust cannot be moved outside, fine. So we have to keep it open throughout from BDC to TDC, fine. When piston reaches TDC, till there are some gases as we already discussed in the clearance volume. So for that, we will open the inlet valve also. So now see that inlet valve is already open. Exhaust valve is also already open, fine. So in that degrees, the 10 degree which are for uh, inlet valve and this 5 degree which, are giving, we are, which we are giving, it is for the exhaust valve. So in total of that 15 degree, we will see that it is valve overlapping, fine. So in that case, the fresh charge will enter the engine, it will remove the exhaust fat out of the engine and thereafter piston will start again working for the suction stroke. So this is the basic diagram which is called actual volatiline diagram for the petrol engine. Fine. You can see again that at 10 degree we are opening that is inlet valve open. Again at 10 degree after the BDC we are closing it. Thereafter it will move, we will generate some spark before the 15 degree of the TDC, fine. So after that, the power stroke will be achieved. Now before BDC, we will open that exhaust valve, let's say for 25 degrees. And thereafter, the exhaust will be done. And when piston reaches TDC, after TDC at 5 degree, we will close it. And the degrees between valve opening and valve exhaust valve closing, that is inlet valve is open and exhaust valve is also open, that degree between that is called valve overlap. So that's it for today's session. We will see the diesel engine valve diagram in next session. Fine. Thank you.